good morning and welcome. We welcome you on this 23rd of October to the service of morning prayer that's at St. James the Apostle in Port Carling. With me is the Reverend Dr. Gail Marie Henderson and I'm Helen McNaughton, lay reader of the Parish of Muskoka Lakes. And we'd like to invite you to a service of morning prayer. Morning prayer is a way of speaking to us um, of things that are, are eternal. It also have a, has a way of speaking peace into our hearts, and we'd like to share it with you today. In the book Morning Prayer, we start on page two. For those of you who um, don't have access to a book of morning prayer, it's available on Amazon.com, and you have digital access to it. Our service begins on page two with the words for Trinity. God is love. He that abideth in love abideth in God, and God in him. As we begin, we're called to worship by the words of Habakkuk. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent. And in the words of the psalmist, O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Our service begin, begins on page four. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to this, do this, when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and a humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Will you give me a Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and the desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto humankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and a sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that we may turn from our wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare 
and to pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfailingly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Together, let us say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed Lord, be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we, we forgive them, them that trespass against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and, and to the, the Son, Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Here, we will say the Venite. The Venite is a paraphrase of Psalm 95, and we'll do this by alternative verse. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, O oh, that ye would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with that generation and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Amen. This poem for today is Psalm number 107. And we will continue to do the song in a round. Oh, okay, give thanks. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> we were going to do this, this song with a reading from the old form, and then with an, a new reinterpretation of the song in modern form. I'll start. Reverend Gail Marie will complete the reading in the contemporary. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is gracious. His mercy endureth forever. Let them give thanks whom the Lord hath redeemed and delivered from adversity. And gather them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They that wandered in the wilderness, even in a desert place, found no way to a city where people dwell. 
hungry and thirsty. Their soul fainted in them. And so they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city where people dwell. All that men would therefore praise the Lord for his goodness and declare the wonders that he doeth for the children of human. For he satisfieth the empty soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. So this, as Helen said, this contemporary um, interpretation of the, of the psalm is coming from Psalms for Praying by Sister Nan Narell. We give thanks to you who are the source of love, whose light shines forth throughout the universe. Come. Awaken our hearts that we might do your work. For without you, we can do nothing. Tis your love that loves through us. Gather us in from all the lands, from the east and the west, from the south and the north. Let all who are hungry and thirsty, whose souls are faint within them, Cry out to the most merciful to give them succor, to nourish them with healing love. For fear cannot live where love, grace, and gentleness abide. Enter into the great silence where you may hear the voice of the beloved who satisfies the hungry soul and quenches the thirsty with streams of living water. Amen. You can almost picture God reaching out and it does gathering us all in. Yeah, you really, uh, you really can, can't you? It, it creates some really um, vivid, um, yes. vivid pictures. Yes. Yeah, it gets, uh, I like that. Uh, mm -hmm. But they still, she has still used the word sucker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very old-fashioned word. I, like, I maybe know. there's no replacement for. In one of my little congregations, we had the tiniest little font, and the the, the font had around it the words um, "sucker," and the number of people who would just I mean nobody knows what that word means anymore. It makes no. Sense. <laughs> and but isn't that in a contemporary interpretation, she would still use the, the very old language? I think that's quite a paradox. <laughs> Well, like a bit of a giggle. Maybe, maybe there wasn't an appropriate word. Sometimes you just you use right. the word that is uh, is the is the right word. Language expands us. Yes. Um, yeah. I came across a word in my in my uh, reading this week, and I, it, it it was Walter Brueggemann. It's an old he's an Old Testament professor, um, but the word that was introduced to me was the word prismatic. That something, an event, is a prismatic experience. So he he was talking about the um, like the Exodus, yeah, as he, as an Old Testament professor would be do, doing, and he was talking about those incidences, those Old Testament incidences that we we visit all the time, the crossing of the Red Sea and all of that, as being um, prismatic. They, they, they happen in a, in a time and a place, but their essence of meaning is like a prism. It, it travels through time, and the meaning gets carried through time. And I just thought, oh, that is a word I am going to hang on to. Because so often when you're gathering with people, whether you're at a Bible study, or it doesn't matter what the gathering is, as often in sermons, you want to get, you want to get, you wanna, you want to be able to pull that idea of the movement of an event that obviously is past, but to be 
to catch its progressive me essence. Presence. And and I thought for me that word I thought that is a hold on to word prismatic. <laughs> and I rather like language to begin with, but yeah. So we must move on. Let us continue with the TDM Laudamus, okay, found at the bottom of page seven. And here we'll do it by round. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. And the earth does worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty. Thy honorable, true, and only son. Also the Holy Ghost, the comforter. Thou art the king of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hast overcome the sharpness of death, thou hast opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thy heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee. And we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, and our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. And here we have the option of doing the Benedictus or the Jubilati. The Jubilati is a favorite of mine. So we'll go to page four, four, five, seven. Four, five, seven. Yes. And we'll do it as a round. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. So, okay. Be thankful unto him and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. And we turn back to page 10. And on page 10, we have our in other words, there a confession of the faith, our faith as said in the Apostles' Creed. Let us pray the Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven, heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, Son, our Lord, Lord who was Lord. conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And ever more mightily defend us. God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Or would you do that? Call it? Certainly. So we are on page 252. And once again this week, we will still be praying uh, the collect for the 21st Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our service continues with the second collect, a collect for peace. O God, who art the author of peace, and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And our third collect is a collect for grace. Let us pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governments to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our next prayer is a prayer for the clergy and people. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and clergy and all congregations committed to their charge, the helpful spirit of thy grace, that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. our prayer for all conditions. O God, the creator and preserver of all, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts of conditions, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving help unto all nations. Most especially we pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in the unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in body, mind, or estate. 
that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ, his sake. Amen. Our next prayer is a prayer of general thanksgiving. Almighty God, the Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech us, thee, to give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. And finally, we come to the prayer of St. Chrysostom, in whom we ask, for granting of requests. This to me seems like a community prayer. So let's pray this prayer together. We invite you at home to join us in this prayer. Almighty God, who's given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and does promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. And together, let us say the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. We thank you for joining us for morning prayer. We hope that you're doing well. We remind you about all the COVID precautions. We remind you to reach out by telephone or by email to others, giving them comfort. We help you. This brings a good start to your day. And we hope that you go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.